And there we go. This is the crown number 107. Made in Malaya or Singapore, I'm not really sure which, same thing actually. By the Kuang Long Chan Company of 200 South Bridge Road, Singapore. Sole agents for, I really can't read all of that, but for anchor sewing machines, crown gramophones. Now, there is confusion sometimes pertaining to these machines. Look at this cat. Fascinates him. A lot of people have seen these, and in fact, at least three different individuals saw this one where it was and assumed it was a modern replica crapophone. Now, the definition of a crapophone just means it's some kind of wooden case of an outside horn machine cobbled together, a crude horn thrown on it with a very crude back bracket and tone arm, and usually a motor that's sourced out of some, fo some of a portable phonograph. Most of them come out of India. I'm sure you can find them elsewhere. That is not the case with this machine. This is probably one of the very last commercially manufactured quality outside horn gramophones. Uh, it was made in uh, Singapore before the war. That's World War II. Uh, I guess the Japanese occupation kind of put a stop to it, but they were licensed to use uh, various parts. Like, for instance, there is a two-spring Gerard motor in there, a very nice, clean one. Uh, the reproducer, I'm not sure who made it, but that was also sourced from the UK. The one that's on the machine now is actually one of my number fours. That is not the original Crown Gramophone reproducer. I have that. As a matter of fact, I'll show you. Oops. That's it right there. I need to go through it before I play records with it, although I'm sure it probably does play. My cat is doing his nipper impersonation here. And if you look in there, oh, we got interrupted, okay. That motor is very, very clean. And in good condition, it's a two spring, like I mentioned before. Now with this machine, this machine has never been banished to the attic or the basement or the garden shed. This was purchased by a member of the Foreign Service. It traveled with that person from home to home over many decades, always, you know, in the den or the office or whatever. It was never, it was used. This, this machine was in service. It was never taken out of service. So you have the garage turntable, the garage motor, probably the crank also. The case is uh, locally sourced from Singapore. This is teakwood, or so I'm told. And you can see the decals on it. And of course, unique touches like the observation windows. I mean, there's nothing really to see in there except the motor. So if you like to sit there and watch the motor spin, you, you can do that. Has them on the sides and in the front. Not on the back though. The back bracket is made from aluminum, not pot metal, it's aluminum. The horn, which I believe was also UK sourced. You can see it has the crown decals right on it. This is a very, very original machine. And uh, just to have all of you, and, and note this, this is interesting. These little brackets here, that's for stowing the crank. Now you, I cannot think of a single outside horn talking machine that has crank stowage clips actually on the machine. I mean, they were made the crank to stay on. You never really took it off because they weren't intended to be portable. Apparently this machine is, it. well, it is small enough. You could carry it around if you wanted to. It's not very big. It's about the same size as the Victor II. The horn's a bit smaller than the Victor II. And it's lighter than the II because it doesn't have a heavy cast iron back bracket. And the wood is not quite as dense, I don't think. But you could take that crank off and stow it right there in those clips. And those clips, by the way, are the same ones used on the HMV 101, the early models that had the clips on the motor board, and the 100 to stow the crank. And the Victor Vichola 50, <laughs> they're all the same. Obviously the same supplier. Take a good look at the, the decals on there. The Crown. 
Now, like I was saying about crapophones before, people tend to mistake these because they see the style of wood, it's teak, it's got the heavy, heavy red coating on there, and they, ah, crapophone. Well, at least three different individuals in Florida, where this was found by a friend of mine, in the man's house, they're having an estate sale. Unfortunately, someone had passed away and they were selling off, you know, the contents of an estate. And this was right in the home. He was able to play it right there. Three different people, so-called collectors, had walked away from this because they just assumed, ah, that's a crapophone. It's not. Nothing could be further from the case. This uh, Kwong Loon Chan, whoever he was, I haven't really found much information on him, but he was licensed to use these parts and to make these machines, and he did, and they were available in uh, that area, you know, for uh, uh, probably five or six years. I'm not really sure how long they were being made before the Japanese invasion put a stop to that, but... This one came home with a member of our foreign service and remained in service. Wasn't uh, tossed out or banished. And this horn is, you can see over here a little bit, that is galvanized steel. Probably the only one I've ever seen that is actually galvanized steel. Not brass or regular, you know, ordinary steel. Anything like it is galvanized, which is why there's not a speck of rust on it anywhere which uh, sometimes you do find on steel horns. Some of the paint may be flaking, but the steel underneath is solid and likely to remain that way for my lifetime and beyond. And because this machine never left service, when you look in there, you don't see the solid lump of coal you usually see when a motor has been just neglected for many, many years. This one's been kept oiled, it's been kept serviced, and it's in nice condition. And I'm sure when I open that reproducer, I'm probably going to find the same thing. That's, uh, if, it ha if it has rubber gaskets, it probably doesn't. Being British, it probably has felt. But it, uh, I imagine that it's been maintained. Someone took the time and the effort to maintain this machine for all these years. And this was a very lucky find. My friend called me. He said, you know, I found this weird this weird, weird photograph. I said, what would define weird? Oh, well, it's got a horn. Okay, that had my interest right there. And uh, it's, it's like kind of different. It's got glass in it. And I, that struck a chord. I remembered something. I said, are there decals on the front of it? Yeah. Do they say the crown? Yeah. And uh, he told me a price. And I said, buy it now, immediately. Grab it. Run. And he did. Because these just, because they were, these were never, ever sold in this country. Ever. They were never exported, as far as I'm aware, outside of, of Singapore, Malaya, whatever. They were for the local market there. So the only way they get here is someone physically carries it here all the way from Singapore, you know, and, and brings it home after maybe they were in the military there, maybe they were in the service or, or the, you know, something like that. So there's not a whole lot of these floating around and probably very few of them in this condition. Now I'm going to go through it, of course. That's just what I do. You know, the motor's going to come out and I'm going to go over it and make sure everything's good and service it fully and all of that stuff and I'm going to tighten up the torn arm a little bit because it's slightly wobbly. And, of course, going to go through the reproducer and uh, have a look at that, see what's going on in there. Other than that, I'm just going to dust this machine off, put it on my shelf, and play records with it. That's it. You know, because it's uh, just a nice machine. And I'll show you the back. Take a closer look around at it. Two little wing nuts. Hold it on there. I wouldn't be surprised if that stoke could stow inside the case. The case has an opening door on the bottom. You can see the little hole for it there. Two little wooden, um, what do you call it? It's little holders, I guess you can call them. You just slide them aside and the, the bottom of the case drops right out. You can get right in there with the motor, you service everything. Number 107. See, I don't know if they made other models of this like I said, I don't have that much information on them. It would imply that they do, but that could just be an advertising gimmick. The number 107, okay, what about the other 106 models? Probably don't exist, but you never know. They could have made more than one style of gramophone. They could have made bigger ones. They might have had different cases, different woods, different finishes. Don't know. Nice red color, which you don't see too often on horns. But I guess that was, like I said, for the local market. So you see a, a lot of things red in that part of the world. But there you go. There's a 
Initial look at the Crown Gramophone, model 107. Very rare. You don't, you're not going to see too many of these floating around. If you do see one, just remember, it's not a crapophone. Grab it. And if anybody want to know what record that was, that was obviously Caruso. There you go. And look at the needle. There's little needle trays in the back. Oh, there's a needle in one of them. I didn't realize that. I think two of them. No covers on them, but uh, they're there. You don't usually see that on outside horn machines, you know, exposed horn gramophones either, is the needle cups like that. But that, oh, and if I didn't mention it before, this was made in the 1930s. Not the, you know, first decade of the 21st century, or the 20th century, anything like that. It's not 1903. This is like 1933, 35, whatever. And I'm guessing that this would be among the very last outside horn gramophones that would have been made anywhere. I mean, it was already obsolete everywhere else in the world. But for some reason, this particular company decided that maybe their local market demanded it. The they, local market wanted these types of machines. So this is what they made. I'm sure they could have made some form of portable a lot easier and cheaper. Well, maybe they did. Who knows? But there you go. The Crown.